can't get a line. Somebody give me the easy I.O. Okay, I need to put a line into your leg. I'm going to put it actually into the bone. We can't get a line on you, an IV line, okay? Who needs an I.O.? I.O. is indicated for acute patients who are experiencing cardiac or respiratory arrest, require multiple IV sticks to obtain vascular access for medication or fluid infusion, have limited or no vascular access, require rapid intubation or sedation, previously have required central venous access for infusion due to difficult vascular access, have an immediate need for drugs or fluids, or require intraosseous access for emergencies. The following are contraindications for easy IO access. A fracture on the targeted bone, previous orthopedic procedures near the insertion site, a prosthetic limb or joint. IO has been used within the past 24 hours on the targeted bone. Infection at the insertion site or an inability to locate landmarks or excessive tissue. Okay, now I'll let you know before I'm gonna put it in, okay? I'm just finding the spot where I'm going to put it. Are you ready? Okay, quick poke. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. How was that? That was all right. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. This is the medication. It's gonna make it numb, okay? So it's gonna make it numb in there. As I'm putting it in, if I'm going too fast, if there's too much pain, let me know and I'll just slow down, okay? Here we go, let me know if I'm going too fast. How are you doing? Fine. On a scale of one to 10, what's your pain? Two. Okay. And now? I like a three. And now, three. Mm -hmm. Still doing okay? Mm -hmm. What's your pain level at now? It's going down. Okay. Two. Now again, we're just gonna go slowly here. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Still doing okay? What's your pain level on a scale of one to 10? Like a four. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now this next flush needs to go in pretty quick. Okay, it's gonna take me about five seconds. So I'm just gonna count down with you. You're gonna feel some pressure and some stinging pain when I do that. And then I'm gonna be done in five seconds, okay? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> okay? All right, what's your pain level right now? <laughs> okay. So I'm still going to. I'm going to give you a little more lidocaine to manage that pain. Doing okay still? What's your pain level? Like a three. Just gonna let the IV push that medication in a little bit.
Doing okay still? Scale of one to ten, what's your pain out? I got one. Still? Mm -hmm. What's it at now? One. Okay. Still a one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to check that and make sure I don't have any fluid leaking around it. Great, now the last thing is just to put the wristband on. This just lets everyone else in the hospital know that you've got an IO in place. All right, there you go, you did great. Okay, Kelly, we're ready to get this out, okay? Okay, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist and pull this straight up while I'm taking it out, okay? Ready? And you're all done. Okay, we'll just get that wristband off you. All right. Good job. Okay, so Karen, we were not able to get IV access, so what we're going to do is we're gonna get vascular access by putting it into the bone. So what you're gonna feel is it feels a lot like an IV when it's going in. You're gonna feel a little bit of pressure when it's going into the bone. And then I'm gonna give you some medication once it's in there that's gonna to help to numb that area up so you won't feel anything after that, okay? okay. So are you allergic to any medications? Just penicillin. Penicillin. Have you ever had lidocaine before? Um, not that I'm aware. Okay. All right. When you're ready to place the needle, remove the Easy IO driver from the case and remove the trigger guard if present. Select the appropriate needle set and inspect the packaging and cartridge for damage. Open the Easy Connect tubing that comes with the needle set. If the patient is responsive to pain, administer 2% lidocaine without preservatives or epinephrine, also known as cardiac lidocaine, for anesthesia prior to your initial saline flush. Prime the Easy Connect with the appropriate amount of lidocaine. Once your Easy Connect is primed, clean the insertion site according to your institutional policy for aseptic procedures. Next, identify the site. The proximal humerus insertion site is located directly on the most prominent aspect of the greater tubercle. Ensure that the patient's hand is resting on the abdomen and that the elbow is adducted or close to the body. Slide your thumb up the anterior shaft of the humerus until you feel the greater tubercle. This is the surgical neck. Depending on patient anatomy, approximately one centimeter above the surgical neck is the insertion site. Vitacare recommends the 45 millimeter needle on patients weighing more than 40 kilograms. The humerus is the preferred site for patients who are responsive to pain. Once the insertion is completed, secure the arm in place to prevent movement and accidental dislodgement of the IO catheter. The proximal tibia insertion site is approximately two centimeters below the patella and approximately two centimeters medial to the tibial tuberosity, depending on patient anatomy. The insertion sites for pediatric patients are the same as those for adults. In small children, generally under the age of two, the tibial tuberosity may be difficult or impossible to locate. If the tibial tuberosity cannot be palpated, locate the distal aspect of the patella. Move approximately two centimeters distally, depending on patient anatomy, and then medial to the flat aspect of the tibia.
The distal tibia insertion site is located approximately three centimeters proximal to the most prominent aspect of the medial malleolus, depending on patient anatomy. Place one finger directly over the medial malleolus. Move approximately three centimeters proximally and palpate the interior and posterior borders of the tibia to ensure the targeted insertion site is on the flat center aspect of the bone. Attach the needle set to the power driver and remove the safety cap. Okay, now what I'm doing is just coming up and finding that spot again. Insert the needle until the needle is touching the bone. Verify there is sufficient needle length. Power the driver and advance, applying limited pressure until you feel a change in resistance. Stabilize the needle set hub and remove the power driver. Remove the stylet and dispose of in an approved sharps container. We recommend you use the Easy Stabilizer when accessing the proximal humerus and when placing the Easy I.O. in pediatric patients. In the next scene, we will demonstrate the placement of the Easy Stabilizer. But for the remainder of this video, we will show the catheter in place without a stabilizer for visual clarity. After removal of the stylet, place the stabilizer over the I.O. catheter hub. Attach the Easy Connect to the catheter hub. Just going to be securing these tapes down. Okay. Remove tab one on the stabilizer to expose the adhesive. Then remove tab two on the stabilizer to expose the adhesive. Finally, ensure that the stabilizer securely adheres to the patient's skin. Prepare the site according to your protocol. Attach the Easy Connect to the catheter hub. If the patient is alert or responsive to pain, begin administering 2% lidocaine very slowly in approximately 0.2 milliliter increments. Titrate lidocaine administration to patient response. Still doing all right? Following administration of the prescribed dosage of lidocaine, administer That's one so milliliter of saline very slowly to ensure the patient receives the lidocaine remaining in the Easy Connect. Go slow again. I want you to tell me when we're to the point where you're not feeling pain. If the patient is alert or responsive to pain, prepare them for intense pressure associated with the bolus. So the rest of this, it's going to have to go in pretty quickly. So it's going to take me about five seconds to get that in, so I'm just going to count you through it, okay? Are you ready? Administer 10 milliliters of normal saline One, very two, rapidly three, over five four, seconds or less. Five. Doing all right? Note that the pain will end almost immediately after termination of the flush. Flush is required to get good flow. Remember, no flush, no flow. You should then follow with additional lidocaine as protocol allows. Okay, what's your pain level at now? Probably like a one or two. Great, great. So now I'm just gonna hook this up to our IV tubing and that's gonna run the rest of that medication in. The pressure in the medullary space is approximately one-third of the patient's mean arterial pressure. This is important to remember because the pressure outside the bone in the IV bag must be higher than the pressure inside the bone to achieve flow. Therefore, fluids or medications must be delivered under pressure to obtain maximum flow rates. Rapid fluid infusers can be used for aggressive fluid resuscitation. I'm just putting a little pressure on that fluid. doing okay? Yeah, it's a little pressure, but it's tolerable. Okay, great. Monitor the patient's pain during infusion and repeat lidocaine as necessary. Monitor the infusion site for signs of extravasation. Okay, so now that we've got that in, I just need to put a wristband on you. This identifies to everyone else in the hospital that you have an IO in place. Place the wristband on the patient, indicating the date and time of easy IO placement. That's it, and we're done. Okay, Karen, we're ready to get this out. So I'll just walk you through the steps as I'm doing them. So I'm just shutting off your IV. I'm just gonna take that apart right here. Okay, 
And now I'm just going to peel this back. All you're going to feel there is just that tape coming off your skin. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this off and I'm just going to pull this right back up and over. So this is just the stabilizer, it's not taking the needle out. And then I'm just putting a syringe on there. So I'm just going to pull this back, okay? Mm -hmm. Ready? One, two, three. All right. How you doing? Good. All right. Okay. Now we'll just get that wristband off you. There we go. Following removal of the EZIO, inform the patient that soreness is normal for up to 48 hours following removal and can be treated with over-the-counter pain medication. The patient should be able to assume normal activities as soon as their primary medical condition allows. Finally, if the patient detects any signs of infection or other problem, they should contact their primary care physician. Thank you for watching this training presentation. For more information, please visit www.vitacare.com.